Hey, welcome. Hi. This is my first time doing, um, sh well, sharing a presentation online. So let me know if, it, if things seem off or it's, it's not lining up with what I'm saying, please. Okay. Thanks. Let me just give it a few more minutes for people to show up. Okay, so I think we can go ahead and just get started and I'll just check people in as they show up. Hopefully I'll catch them. <clears throat> so my name is Peter Chow. I am uh, with the wellness program at Solano Community College um, through JFK University. And um, I am a, a graduate student for marriage family therapist and also professional clinical counselor. I do have a, a background working in the mental health field for about um, nine years now in and out of hospitals and the community and also um, in Sacramento County as well. And Okay, so thank you for joining us today. Um, since this is recorded, I'm just gonna ask if uh, we can 
be muted until there's questions. Otherwise, your your screen blows up into. I, I think there's a little monitor, and that can be distracting for folks too. Um, so participate as much as you want or as little as you want, and just um, or listen and just kind of absorb everything that's going on. And so hopefully, uh, we'll after this presentation, it it will have some benefit for you sitting through this. Um, so the COVID landscape and it's unpredictable and it's still changing and it's difficult to to know what will happen and uh, we definitely are exhibiting this collective crisis and shock and this is uh, probably one of the few times that literally people around the world is going through the same thing so um to reframe that a little bit we definitely are in all of this together um, that can help for anxiety um, and just to know that we, we really aren't alone and we are all dealing with this in some form or fashion by ourselves as well as together and so recognize the impact of, of this crisis and um, so our world has been turned upside down and there's a lot of uncertainty and confusion and our basic things like uh, safety and security is uh, being threatened and um, that can be uh, well, at least i think the reason why people are going crazy for toilet paper is because of that that very semblance of safety is not there and um, things that we rely on to be there all of a sudden isn't so um, what happens we feel vulnerable we feel powerless and even helpless and so we have been at this point, it's about two months now that we're dealing with this, um, this, this health crisis. And it definitely is exhausting. Um, we'll go into a few of the ways that it comes out and how that impacts us. And we'll look at specific um, symptoms of uh, crisis and trauma because that's what this is. And so notice when you're feeling off or just a bit disoriented and recognize that this is normal because you're asked to do what without any kind of um, direction or anticipation. So we're asked to adapt very quickly and trying to make sense with uh, no clear answers. And there's still no clear answers with our uh, leading Corona doctors and experts. They don't have a full understanding of everything that's going on. So ways that this is impacting you cognitively emotionally physically and behaviorally and so we'll look at cognitively first and as we mentioned feeling spaced out or dis disoriented the feeling of confusion your memory and concentration is affected and you may be experiencing more nightmares than than before and this is absolutely normal and uh, what it looks like emotionally is um, the shock, denial, and disbelief. Uh, we can be feeling angry, irritable, mood swings, anxiety, um, sense of guilt. Uh, and, and that can be tied back to whether or not that you are able to maintain a job, the loss of a job, and what that means financially for you or your family. And of course, the feelings of sadness and hopelessness and absolutely the, the feeling of disconnected or sort of a numbness. And so physically what that looks like, the nightmares that we talked about, insomnia is something else that we'll focus on a little bit as well. Um, the majority of the people I've talked to, this is probably one of the big things that they're impacted by is that their sleep schedule is kind of funky and it's really unstructured and relaxed and it makes sense because that's how our days are we if you're still lucky to be working it, it could be that you're working from home and that um the hours may have shifted staying up later waking up later so that results in some of these other things of fatigue and heartbeat and just agitation and edginess sort of this uh, pent up energy of not being able to to be as physical as you normally is uh, before this and so it also can translate into pains and aches and definitely muscle muscle tension 
And so behaviorally, um, your, your sleep is not regulated. It's um, staying in bed too long, as we talked about. Your diet might be affected, the type of foods you eat, um, using more substances just to deal with the, the coping. And isolating is probably the one that we'll focus most on during this workshop and how that um, can impact us and on many different levels and things that we can do about it. But ultimately that your normal routine is not what it is. And it, you could be drifting into this sense of, well, I, I, I'm not really concerned about it and just kind of letting that go. And there is danger in that as well. And so, well, how do we deal with it? And ultimately it coping with, this or anything else is different and unique for everyone. Um, it's very important not to be critical or judgmental during these times of others and also of yourself. And so um, know that people cope because that's how they found things that work. So thinking with it on that aspect helped to just kind of curb our judgment on other people and on, also on ourselves. And um, yeah, everyone copes differently. Hello, uh, so we, we've already started, um, but um, I, I'll be on after if there's any additional questions or anything that you want to clarify. Um, so the, the, what's going on right now uh, absolutely can be uh, interpreted as grief. And typically we think of grief as a death of a loss, but in aspect, this is a loss where we're losing our way of life and our, our freedoms. And that is very difficult and it goes through much of the same process. And so this is the five common stages of grief. And um, it's, can be called the grief cycle, but it, it does, it's not necessarily cyclical. So uh, it can uh, bounce back. Uh, it's very normal to go back and forth between these stages. Um, but we'll start with denial and um, what that is. And so denial is the intellectual and emotional rejection of something that's clear and obvious. And Interesting enough, denial is a survival mechanism. And uh, it, it translates back to our hunting and gathering ancestors. And um, for example, uh, if they were attacked while they're out gathering uh, by a tiger and um, they're not able to, to use the coping mechanism of denial, then that they would feel the full impact of the tiger attack and they would pretty much be paralyzed and not being able to, to fend off or flight or escape. So there is a reason that we use these coping mechanisms um, to survive. So um, we also deal with that way emotionally and we deny emotional pain and that's what this is. And in, in time of self-preservation, and so what that looks like today is that, and I am guilty of saying some of these things myself, that this whole thing is overblown. And, or comparing it to the flu, everyone gets the flu, or I, I've heard even that uh, people were saying that more people die from the flu than this virus at that point in time. Um, or that we're not part of this at-risk group of old or immunocompromised, and um, so I'll be fine. So that's some of the ways denial shows up. Um, the next is anger. And the feeling of anger can give us the illusion of empowerment. And it's an attempt to control what we can't control. And anger feels good because it energizes us. And, but however, the, the danger in that is it doesn't necessarily, um, we, we're not, dealing with the problem. We're, we're blaming others, we're engaging in power struggle, externalizing the issues, and, and sometimes refusing to comply. And so what that looks like is that this is China's fault. If they quarantine earlier, we wouldn't be having this problem. 
or um, I don't care what the governor or um, for us, it'll be the, the health officer of Solano County says about sheltering at home, I'm going to work today or um, that I'm bored and I'm, I'm just gonna have some friends over and I don't care. And so after that comes bargaining and bargaining happens when denial breaks down, anger isn't working and we finally are starting to get hit with our reality. And, uh, but we're not quite ready to give up that illusion of trying to control. So we're, we're, we're trying to compromise. And so what that looks like, it's maybe it's okay to spend time with others as long as we're washing our hands and before they see me, or that they'll, this will all be over by Easter and we're, we're well past Easter now, and I'll be safe until then, and then we'll go back to normal, or that I know when people look sick and I'll be fine as long as I stay around those that are healthy. And uh, we do know that there are asymptomatic carriers, so. And, and when that doesn't work, we're hit with despair. And so despair and depression runs hand in hand. And that's when we feel the full gravity of the situation. And there is no more room for denial. And what happens is that we're left with hopelessness and just feeling really disempowered and feeling victimized also, uh, pretty much. And so what that looks like um, for those that are able, lucky enough to go to work, I can't go to work or if I can't go to work, I can't earn money and I'll be broke and I'll be homeless. So just going to the extreme, just everything's going to break down and uh, or that this epidemic is the new normal. And I can say goodbye to my hopes and dreams. It'll be all over or that if uh, we are in the high risk group, and that I'm gonna die alone and no one will come to help me when the time comes. So that's a scary thought in itself. And uh, finally, we have acceptance. And acceptance occurs when we finally acknowledge and surrender to the facts, whatever those facts may be. And when we reach the stage, we can stop denying and fighting reality and we can start dealing as effectively as we can with what has happened and what's, what is happening and what's going to happen. And so what that looks like is that I, I can't control the pandemic, but I can only do my part by sheltering in place, my hands and staying positive. And uh, the fact that I can't leave my house doesn't mean my life has to stop. I can work from home for those that, again, are lucky enough to do so. And I can still connect with my friends and my family via phone and the internet. And I can also enjoy the extra time that I have with my, my family, my kids, and our, our pets. And lastly, that the world is going to change, but maybe when this is all over, we'll be kinder to one another. So that's the hope. And um, for us that are dealing and struggling with anxiety, and anxiety is usually fueled with trying to control things that we can't control in the future. And there is a fear component with that as well. And so uh, the serenity prayer, and I'm just kind of going out of order, but the serenity prayer is rooted in Alcoholics Anonymous, but I think is very fitting for what we're going through. And um, there is a religion aspect to this so it starts off with god but if, if you're not religious yourself then you can absolutely take that off and just start with um, the serenity to accept the things that i cannot change the courage to change the things that i can and the wisdom to know the difference and this is becoming sort of a, a, a mantra just to help relieve a bit of anxiety in these uncertain times. And so, um, and there are a lot of things that we don't control right now. So we don't control whether someone walks too close and invades our six uh, foot um, distancing or that how the, the government is responding to the health situation or that are, are relying on online orders are being backlogged and 
and not following through and we, we can't utilize that as we normally would. I know that Amazon's definitely impacted as well. And so you, and sadly, if someone you know does get uh, affected by the virus, there's, there's also nothing you can do if someone gets sick as well. So uh, some of these things are sobering thoughts, but um, continue to tell yourself and focus on things you can control. And so it's, it's absolutely okay to, to feel a number of emotional responses to all of this. Um, but what won't help is trying to control what is beyond our control. So it sounds simpler than it is, but um, this is something that people, it's very natural and normal and tend to do. And going back to the toilet paper example of, of how people are losing their minds over toilet paper, it's trying to control that very semblance of safety and security because everything else is outside of their control. And then when they don't even have control of going to the grocery store and picking up toilet paper, it elevates their emotions to another level. So have realistic expectations. And uh, lastly, the more that you fight with whatever's outside of your control will, will drain yourself and you'll have less resources available to, to manage everything else effectively. And I think most importantly out of all of this is that accepting doesn't mean you like or approve of the situation and that you can dislike and, and even hate what's going on and still accept it. And so um, just to break things up, um, I like to go into a safe place imagery exercise. And this is helpful for uh, when our, our, our environment are, uh, is pretty chaotic or stressful and it's not realistic or feasible to step out of our environment. So we're doing this mentally. And um, what we wanna do is find a, a nice comfortable place that we can either sit or lay down. And um, when you're finding this place and after you found it, um, take a few deep breaths and just um, the only thing is just to make sure you're exhaling for as twice as long as you're inhaling. So you're, you're breathing through this and I'll continue to talk. And um, having this safe place is, will be in our mind, but it will be somewhere you, that you can step into. And it can even help when you're just kind of feeling stressed out and need a little bit of a break from reality. Um, so our visual, visual visualizations can be strengthened by ensuring that you in, engage all of your senses in building this picture in your mind's eye. And it's more than just seeing. And um, during this process, if you notice any negative links or images entering your imagery and discard that and, and build something else. We want this to be a reliable source. We don't want to be in, uh, having impacted by anything negative as well. And um, avoid using things you know. Um, so such as your home or your bed as your safe place. We want to create a new place. And uh, new can also mean that a place you visited on the say vacation that you really enjoyed and you found really peaceful and you wanted to hang on to that place. And so um, you're still breathing throughout all of this and um, go ahead and close your eyes and um, just become aware of any tension in your body and where that tension is. And visualize the tension being let go with each with each out breath. Whether it's in your back or in your shoulders or your neck, breathe that out. So you're gonna imagine a place where you feel calm, peaceful and safe. And this may be a place you've been to before 
It may be somewhere that you've dreamed about going to or somewhere that you've seen a picture of. Or it can just be a peaceful place that you create yourself and it doesn't exist in reality. So once you have your place, notice the colors and the shapes. Is there anything else that you notice? Now notice the sounds that are around you, or maybe it's silent at this place that you're at. The sounds that are far away and those that are near you. And the sounds that are more noticeable and those that are more subtle. Think about any smells you notice there. And now focus on any sensations in your skin or if there's the earth beneath you or whatever it is that you are in that place. Notice the temperature. Notice any movement of air and anything else you can touch. And notice the pleasant physical sensations on your body while you enjoy this safe place of yours. Now, while you're in your peaceful and safe place, you might choose to give it a name or one word or phrase that you can use to bring this image back anytime that you need to. And you can choose to linger there a while, just enjoying the peacefulness or serenity. You can leave whenever you want to, just by opening your eyes and being aware of where you are now and bring yourself back to the alertness in the here and now. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes and we'll continue with our workshop. So self-care is the is the, uh, what we'll be focusing on in response to everything that that um, that comes along with the COVID landscape and and how we deal. Um, as I said before, everyone deals differently, and so we'll go over some of the things that may work for you. And it's uh, maybe good to try a few of these things and a few times just to see if they are effective. And um, so it's important to gain the self-awareness that you can take steps and things you can do. Focus on your actions. So that's what we can focus on. And take a moment to note where you are right now, mentally, physically, emotionally, and behaviorally. And just do a check-in with yourself. And uh, right now, you may be feeling with the, the temptation to do whatever is the most comfortable. And I am absolutely doing this myself. And some of that may look like staying in your pajamas all day, eating comfort foods, leaving showering for later, or even not at all, uh, returning to use or increasing substance use, avoiding work, putting off exercise until later, and not to realize that we've started doing all of these things. So while these urges make sense, it's important to pay attention to these kinds of reactions and when changes big or small happen to our lives we are more likely to stop engaging in the routine behaviors that connect us to our goals and so sometimes this happens all at once but more likely that it happens slowly and it's a slow drift away from these behaviors so the analogy here is that is it's similar to a boat slowly s slipping away from the dock and out to sea and uh, this is what we call uh, mooring lines. And uh, these behaviors 
they keep you moored or anchored to the dock of your goals. And uh, whether this means reducing or eliminating substance use, eating in healthy and balanced ways, cultivating meaningful relationships or whatever might be the most meaningful to you. So the temptation to drip might be strong, but it is a critical time to stick with those healthy routines. And this becomes more of a problem when things start to return back to normal in our way of life and uh, having to readjust back. And so that is the, the concern. And so other ways of self-care is uh, distraction, um, whatever that may be for you. And um, also grounding yourself. So that can be meditation, that could be mindfulness. Um, things to stay present, yoga, use your senses. Or emotionally, have that emotional release, that cathartic release. And so the, the singing, crying, dancing, anything physical, anything that brings a sweat, um, just to release some of the endorphins, or not endorphins, the, the cortisol that are built up with stress. Just checking someone in. And it's important to focus on yourself too. Um, Hi, Christine. Um, we're about midway into our, our presentation, but I'll be around uh, if there's any questions. So uh, focus on yourself and just be sure not to uh, have any kind of guilt or shame. And uh, check with uh, your thoughts and how they may be affecting the way you look at the world and reframing that and staying positive and maintaining hope and, and helping that to motivate you to drive through this and also um, structuring your day and your routine. And so uh, if you have a higher power, definitely this is a time to connect and rely on that and to tap into that to, to help you to, to make things, this whole process a bit easier. And so things that you can do for your environment. And so communicate with your loved ones about how you are feeling and have uh, nightly meetings to just access, access or assess the situation um, of what is working and what isn't. If something's not working, don't keep doing it. Um, but just give it a fair shot and definitely communicate your need to others. Um, there, uh, I have clients that struggle to, to reach out to others that are desperate for a connection but um, don't feel the confidence to, to ask someone to, to talk on the phone because the other person prefers to text. It's okay to ask that from them. And it's absolutely okay to say, hey, I just need to hear your voice right now, or just to, I just need to talk to someone. And so video chatting is a little bit better than a phone call. And that's, we're kind of just bound by what we have right now. So rely on what's available. Set boundaries, and if you are working from home, this is a new dynamic that people are also struggling with and having everything sort of meshed together. And so if you're working from home, there are definitely ways that you can do to structure your day or you structure your, your environment. And that might be having a, a certain place that you only go into for the work stuff, keeping your things there. Um, dressing up even though you're staying at home to go to work in this uh, other space and taking your breaks especially your 15 minutes your lunch breaks people have a tendency to let all of that go and what people have noticed that they actually work more at home than they do in their 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 office and working overtime unintendedly so definitely keep track of all that information and, and incorporate that. And lastly, just have patience with yourself and, and yourself or yourself and others. And we're all just trying to figure this thing out right now. And so ways that we can stay connected. Um, these are some of the ideas uh, that I came up with and 
virtually it, it may mean more screen time but zoom parties i think zoom still has a free account that they can sign up for uh, random acts of kindness is a, a website i really love um, but museums are also offering um it's not up there but mu museum i know the uh, monterey bay aquarium right now or at least a few weeks ago is doing live streaming of a lot of their exhibits so that can be therapeutic in itself just to, to have that on and to watch the, the the sea otters do their thing getting back into cooking uh fitness there's there's tons of exercise stuff everywhere just find ways to be creative and do things that you enjoy so if nothing else that you've heard during this whole workshop these are the most important things to, to take home with you and that's just to Give yourself permission to struggle through this and forgive yourself for being imperfect and for being human. And so definitely lower your expectations with whatever is going on now and to practice radical self-acceptance. And um, that is just psychological jargon for just accepting everything going on. Um, without much question, blame, or pushback. And um, we're doing so much things right now under the umbrella of fear and stress. So that is not always the best way to approach something. So the more that we can tend to some of that fear and stress, the better that we are to, to deal with other things that may pop up because life doesn't stop. Um, and Definitely, you cannot fail at this. There's no roadmap. There's no precedent. This is all new. We're doing whatever we can to figure this thing out. Our, our experts haven't even figured this out. Don't expect you, you to figure it out. Give yourself a break. And lastly, you are amazing and awesome, but you don't have to be perfect. And uh, these are some of the ways to seek support. Um, if you're working definitely check in to see if there's an employee assistance program um, a lot of information i've gotten was off psychology today i love the website your health insurance um, whether this is medical or behavioral health um, there is a transition to everything being a virtual appointments so that's just kind of how things are but there's still absolutely essential service so use that for when you need. I've actually had people slow with, with how things are slowing down now looking into some of the health health stuff that they've kind of pushed out of their mind. So that can absolutely be a positive with what's going on right now to have more time to do that. Um, there are some websites, there's tons of websites out there that can give support. Um, Google is awesome and apps help too. Uh, Headspace is one that I love um, for for guided meditation um, and and find what out what type of meditation works for you and calm is another one and the wellness counseling at Solano is still functioning um, however it, we're just taking referral forms and uh, no longer just drop in obviously but just do online so there's the link on the screen and um, it's posted on the, the counseling portion of uh, Solano's website as well. And you do have my email for any kind of questions or um, yeah, just anything. And I'll do my best to try to answer that. So um, that's pretty much the workshop. Yeah, uh, if there's any questions, I'll hang around for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I do appreciate you guys showing up and, and just kind of being a part of this. So stay safe and take care of yourself. Thank you.
Okay, so it looks like there's no more other questions. I'll just go ahead and end this now. Thank you so much for showing up. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are just looking out for your well being and, and use some of the stuff that we talked about. Okay, take care. Bye.